making it work. I'm going to be doing a very simple uh, sourdough bread recipe. Um, every time you, you work with sourdough, it starts out with taking it out of the refrigerator. This is kind of what it looks like when, after it's been sitting in there. for It's been in there for about a week. I take mine out and do something with it about once a week. I've had this starter for two years. And um, we're going to feed it with about three quarters cup of unbleached flour. Always make sure it's unbleached. Unbleached all-purpose flour and three quarters cups of, cup of water. Uh, always feed it with equal amounts of flour and distilled water. And make sure it's distilled because uh, the bleach will, will kill the bacteria and the wild yeasts that are in the sourdough starter that make it work. So we have, to, we have to keep it happy, keep it alive. But just kind of mix this up. It ends up looking a lot like a, kind of like a pancake dip batter, about that consistency. And then we'll stir up, stir up the starter. And it does separate a little bit that's no big deal when it's resting in the refrigerator it's just part of it I take mine out about once a week mix it up feed it and either do something with it or pour pour some off usually I do something with it whether it's biscuits or bread pizza dough anything like that bagels It's one of my husband's favorites. Okay, so once this gets mixed up good, I'm just going to pour it in there with that. Okay, and you can, I don't know if you can see or not, but it is kind of bubbly a little bit, and that's what we want. That's what tells us that it is active, alive and active. And I make a really, um, probably sweeter sourdough than most people like. That's just our personal preference. There's lots of sourdough recipes out there. This one is, um, it's a little bit sweeter. And because I wrap it with foil as soon as it comes out of the oven, it's actually, uh, doesn't have that hard crust on it either. And, you know, like I said, some people like that, but we just prefer the softer sweeter. Okay, so stir this up together. This this is the beginning of baking anything with sourdough is to go ahead and feed the starter because it's just been resting in the refrigerator. And then I will cover it with plastic and let it rest. You just set it out on the counter. Let it do its thing during the day. I'm trying to get most of the lumps out of it. But it, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to get every single lump out of it. Just make sure it's stirred up good. That's Piper whining. Piper wants to go outside or something. I don't know what Piper wants. She just whines a lot. Are you whining? just cover this with plastic and let it sit and then we'll uh, stir up the dough tonight okay here we go this is the starter it's been sitting here bubbling and doing its thing all day and uh, I'll just take that off so you can kind of see oh yeah it's very active it's very nice and bubbly so uh, we are ready to make the bread what I'll do first is I'm going to start with sugar this is a natural pure cane sugar. You can use honey if you'd like. Um, a, and you don't have to use a full third of a cup. Um, you'll get more of a traditional sourdough flavor if you don't use all of the sugar, but that's a third of a cup of sugar. I've got a half a cup of oil and I use classic olive oil rather than uh, a virgin olive oil because the virgin is just too strong of a flavor that for what we like in the in the bread. Okay, 
This is a cup and a half of distilled water and it's been warmed. So it is very nice and warm. That'll help the starter be, be more active. Okay, and I'm going to use a cup of the starter. Stir all that up. And get that in there. And then what I'll do with the with the rest of that starter is I'll just put it in a clean jar, cover it, put it back in the refrigerator and let it rest till I need it again. Okay. A tablespoon of sea salt. And then I'm going to stir this up a bit. just to kind of dissolve the sugar and the salt in with the liquids. That's all I'm doing here. Okay. And then I'm going to use six cups of unbleached flour. Don't lose count. One. Now I'm sure that bakers would have a fit if they saw me doing this, but I'm not a baker. I'm just a making it work type person. That was two. Thought I was going to forget to count, didn't you? Three. Woo! Four. Five. And six. And I'm sure I probably should be, you know, using this little thing and leveling it off and stuff, but I'm just not that particular. Maybe I should be, but I'm not. Okay. And what we're going to do here is set this thing up. See, sourdough is not a time-intensive thing, and it's not a labor-intensive thing, because I spent, you know, what, a minute this morning feeding the starter and getting it ready and then you know just a few minutes putting everything together here to make the dough but it is timing intensive because I had to think about the fact that if I want some sourdough some fresh sourdough bread tomorrow afternoon I had to begin by feeding the starter this morning so it's timing intensive but it is definitely not time or labor intensive because once I get this mixed up, I'm just going to put it in a bowl and let it sit overnight and deal with it again in the morning. Okay, here we go. Start out slow or you'll have a flour explosion. And I kind of hang on to this. It's a, it's a fairly wet dough for, for bread, but um, sometimes it does dry up and get hard and, you know, move around and want to, want to move the bowl off of the thing. So now that it's Getting more incorporated, I can turn the turn the mixer up. And this just does this thing. Whoops, there goes a little flour now that I mentioned that. Whoop. Make sure it's in there good. Make sure your bowl is in the stand mixer good. Now if you don't have a stand mixer, you can still make this. We used to make it by hand all the time. And I love my stand mixer. So I'm just going to let it keep going here until it pulls all of the um, all of the flour away from the sides of the bowl. It pretty much does all the kneading and the mixing right here in this little machine. I'm just going to hold it steady. And you can see it moves it. Pretty, pretty intense. Okay, all the flour is kind of pulling away from the sides. It's coming together in a nice little ball. Nice little dough ball. Not recommended to stick your fingers in there. And it's all pretty much pulled away now. Take a peek at it. So, 
there is my bread dough. See how it's kind of all pulled away from the sides and in, in a nice little nice little ball here. So what I have done is I have set this bowl with a little bit of classic olive oil too. And I'm just going to take this dough ball out. Out of this one. I'm going to smear it around in here to get the oil on it and flip it over and then it'll have oil on both sides. Cover it with plastic and put it somewhere. You can just let it sit out on the counters, especially in the summer. It'll really rise. But, you know, if you're going to run your dishwasher or something like that where there's, there's some extra warmth, set it over top of that. I've done that lots of times, but that's it. We'll check it in the morning. Okay, here we are the next day. And I did run the dishwasher last night, so I set this over there on top of it, and you can see it rose. So all I'm going to do is punch it down a little bit, get some flour out on my working surface here, and knead it a little bit, and then I'll cut it into two, two loaves. I have um, sprayed the pans with olive oil, so they're ready to go. Wait, I'm going to spread that out a little bit. There we go. Just shake it out of there. Yeah, I say that. There we go. Alright. So I'll just knead this. Knead just a little bit. Keep the sleeves out of the way. Cut it into two even pieces of dough. Try to make those as even as possible. There, that looks pretty good. Need each piece a little bit more. Sometimes I feel like I should stand on a stool, get some height on this thing. But. Okay, then I just start forming them into a little loaf and put it in the pan. All right, do the same thing with the other, the other piece of dough. Again, the whole timing thing. So yesterday morning at this time, I was feeding the starter and then letting it sit. And then last night, I stirred up the, the dough, covered it and let it sit. Now this morning, I kneaded it a little bit, cut it into two loaves, shaped it into two loaves. Now I'm spreading some oil on top of that and all I'm going to do is set them in my oven without it turned on although I do have a proofing thing so for right now I'm just going to put them in the oven the way they are close the door and let them sit and they can they can rise all day this is still part of the fermenting process they'll rise all day or I can use um, the proofing option on my my oven and um, make it go a little faster but what I'll do is I'll just check them when I get home from work and we'll see what we got okay when I first got home after work the bread was it was barely risen above the like barely above the pan here so I turned on the um, the proof part for of the oven for a while and just a few minutes just to kind of warm it up in there and then now a couple hours later it is definitely ready to bake so all I'm gonna do is just leave it in the oven, turn it on to 350, and, and let's see what we get. OK, 
Okay, I've just taken it out of the oven. It's nice and golden brown. And you could just dump it out of here, maybe butter the top and leave it kind of crusty. But we discovered purely by accident that we like to uh, wrap it in foil almost immediately. It makes it really soft and since it's also sweeter, it's just so good that way. And that's that's the way we love it, so that's what I'm going to do. Just dump that one out. And flip it over. Wrap it up. Let's see here. And then I just let it cool, just like that. And I'm telling you what, it smells so good in here. Besides the fact that I'm making beans and rice, which also smells really, really good. The bread, oh, mm mm mm. It is just awesome. All right. Put that guy over. Wrap him up. And that is the way we make our basic sourdough bread. <laughs>